Photoshop Senior Edition, folks. Back in the day, uh, and I'm talking about back in the photography days of the dark room and so forth, we used a thing called contact sheets. And contact sheets were basically uh, film strips of our developed film. We would take the length, if it was 36 exposures, which if you're going to get your money's worth, we usually shot 36 exposures. Sometimes uh, if we had the need for speed, we shot 24. But um, you would cut those in strips of six and slide those in the plastic sleeves. And uh, then you'd come in, take a sheet of print paper and um, in the dark room and under a safe light you would uh, lay your 8 by 10 sheet of paper with the emulsion side up and then you would take your <clears throat> uh, negatives and lay them on top of your uh, sheet of paper and you would expose that for a few seconds you do you know, strip tests on it to see what the proper time was and uh, you'd go through the developing process and and uh, you'd have a contact sheet so you'd have little thumbnails of all of your images that were on that roll of film and it was you know extremely helpful to have that you had these little thumbnails you could look at and of course we used a loop to uh, magnify those and um, to be able to see them a little bit better uh, but still they usually were good enough that we could tell what was on our uh, negatives and you know decide whether we wanted to print those full size or not well in Photoshop uh, for a long time uh, Photoshop had uh, contact sheets built in it was a nice little process and then they came up with contact sheet 2 and then all of a sudden it was gone but guess what it came back again and it is in the newer versions uh, of Photoshop uh, if you go to file and you go to automate right here is contact sheet 2 it looks like a uh, behemoth but it's not really that big of a deal <clears throat> I uh, showed the class this uh, particular graduation and I'm just going to you know, quickly use this as an example so you can see it go through the process we're not going to watch the whole thing because there's I don't know 36 photographs in here uh, but what you would basically do is say you know is this uh, particular files or is this you know are we going to go to bridge to get this uh, you just click on choose where this is exactly and I you know I I went to um, computer and then I went to the drive that this is on I have uh, a few different drives and then on here I have uh, sophisticatedly chosen this file called photography stuff and then uh, Marissa graduation and then I put Marissa to print so these are actually prints uh, with specific names on them and that's all I have to do is say they're in this particular file folder and then I just click OK and then I decide what size um, of a document that I want this printed to and uh, you know if you've got your own printer this is really great because then you can just have these thumbnails printed down on your printer and you've got you know this stuff to refer to it's really very very handy uh, and you can uh, set all this up how you want the spacing to be and the defaults are really pretty good on this uh, you can you know change anything here that you want to but again like I said the defaults are very good you can change the font and everything uh, but 
I would basically recommend just clicking OK. The process begins on its own. It's basically like I'm using basically a lot today, I guess. Uh, it's going to run like a script, an action. Uh, so it, you can see it's uh, got the thumbs here that you may or may not see flash through. Uh, you've also uh, have got the mask over here on the side as it works through the process and it's going to go through each and every one that's inside that folder. Notice that each one of these also has a text file associated with it. Uh, now the the big thing that it's doing obviously is you know these are uh, there are five by sevens in here there are four by sixes in here uh, there's an eight by ten or two uh, and this is having to change all of those down to thumbnail size so no matter what size they are they're being changed into thumbs so uh, now it's, oh it's already done so it went faster than I thought it would so look we have two different files that created so if we click on this first one you see it's got this 8 by 10 sheet full and if we zoom in just a little bit you're gonna see uh, there are the names uh, as I named them uh, like for instance here Marissa 5 by 7 horizontal laughing uh, I get as specific as I can without getting carried away and then the second sheet you see there's only four uh, particular photographs on so you know you can see how many you can get on a uh, regular contact sheet so you might want to you know cut it down or whatever to just have so many on a sheet and then say well, that's all I want that's totally up to you but this is really a nice feature in Photoshop so you might want to keep this in mind and make the most of it uh, you can also tell uh, from this and I use a, a magnifying glass sometimes you can you can tell whether the image is high enough quality to uh, let's say deserve a, a full print so you can you know go through there very quickly uh, obviously when you print these on a home computer they're going to um, depending on the printer that you have are going to be uh, better or worse so something to think about do you want to use the file uh, automate and contact sheet 2 I find it to be a very uh, helpful thing especially if you're going to consider filing um, some of your work to have it handy uh, for reference sake and make your your you know to have good records of what you've got this can be very very helpful uh, if you've been to China lately as somebody you know, may not be back yet uh, but you know trips and things uh, contact sheets can be very helpful for that uh, so you can quickly you know lay hands on your trip and say oh yeah it's this you know even if you just use the default numbers uh, that come out of your camera you can still look and say oh this picture that's the four six seven seven five and you can quickly grab it and you know run a, a print off of uh, of it or save it or email it or whatever so wanted to show you that and um, hopefully you can find a good use for that okay how about we create an action to put a, uh, a watermark in the image for us in the same place each time <clears throat> puts a nice little watermark in the image for us and all we have to do is click a button not a brush or anything else just a button so we've got this image and we're just I'm gonna do the usual and create an extra layer here 
exact copy of the background so I'm going to do a control J or a command J on a Mac and I'm going to go and create uh, my text actually I guess we better uh, turn on our actions so if we go to window and go down here where it says actions just click that and you see there are already some uh, actions that uh, Adobe created for us and some of these don't work particularly well and if you try them you'll see for yourself I'm just going to flip that up and so it's not in our way right down here is the new action icon just like new layer icon down here so I'm just going to click that and I'm going to say Steve's watermark and record <clears throat> so we get a record button much like you would on any recorder so whatever steps I do now it's going to record uh, whatever I click on so the first thing I'm going to do is click on the text tool and if I turn on my history uh, you see it we've got a layer by a copy thing that is up there but that was before this started so now if I click right here and type and it didn't type anything at all not sure why it's right there so tiny there it is all right and we can have it anywhere we want if we go up here and click on the little commit or the move tool whichever one we want uh, and we can you know have it wherever we want on the screen right now it really doesn't matter where we put it uh, let's also uh, change the opacity of this just a little bit let's drop that down just a little bit so it's not quite so uh, hard and I guess uh, that's okay now I want to select the layer one because I want to be able to put this in the bottom left hand corner if I select layer one uh, right now that will work for this image only uh, if somebody tries to run this action on their computer and they have a different layer one and if you try to run it and you had a different layer one this is going to work uh, it's not going to work so that's why it's important to know some of the shortcut keys uh, to work this and it will work no matter how many layers that you have and what those layers are called what we're going to do to select this layer one instead of clicking on it is hold down the alt shift or option shift and hit the left bracket key and that's going to select uh, layer one and both these layers now are highlighted but now our uh, alignment keys up here or alignment icons are lit up which is going to allow us to align our text with the bottom left so here's our one for the bottom so that shoots down there and here's the one for the left so now we're aligned bottom left so now we can turn off the recording over here's the stop button so it stops recording and you see all the steps that we did so I can undo uh, all of these things or I can go to my history and go back to where we started this is where I first loaded up this image so if we go back to the layers you see there's nothing else there and now if I sort of rewind our recording and go back towards the Steve's watermark and I hit the play button that ran through the steps and there's 
Steve McLaughlin, bottom left. Well, how do I know that's going to work on another image? Well, let's just load up a completely different image. So I'm going to go to File. Uh, let's do an open recent. Here's one that I, and it's a PSD file. And this one is uh, a CR2 file. So this is a camera raw file. So let's do a open recent, which is a PSD, and it has no la uh, layers in it or anything. I'm just going to hit Steve's watermark, and there you go, Steve McLaughlin. And you can change that opacity however much. You can have it a lot more faded if you want it to, to be. Uh, you know, you can put the copyright symbol at the end and all that stuff if you wish. Uh, you can certainly make it smaller, you can use a different font and so forth, but you can, you know, each time you're done with a, an image, you can certainly just go up and uh, turn your actions on and uh, just hit Steve's watermark, you know, if that happens to be up here at the top, just go to Steve's watermark and hit the play button and you get your watermark. So pretty simple, uh, pretty straightforward, I hope. Uh, you'll experiment with that. Put your own watermark in and uh, try some actions out for yourself. Uh, here you go, Photoshop Senior Edition folks. I'm going to work on somebody that's fairly familiar. This has been slightly adjusted image in uh, Photoshop, no, 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 in Portrait uh, Professional. Took a few years off of myself here, but we're going to dodge and burn me and even make my teeth look a little bit better. Um, this doesn't play especially well to actions because you certainly can't run actions in dodge and burn. But we got to work something else in. Uh, for time and dodge and burn fulfills another one of the things that we needed to cover so let's get started with this okay here's what we need to do we're going to create a couple of additional layers so let's go down to the new layer icon and let's just click it twice and we're gonna call this one dodge d-o-d-g-e and this will be burn not B-E-R-N alright here's what we're gonna do we're gonna fill both of these layers with 50 percent gray so let's go up to edit down to fill and under use select 50 percent gray and click OK then go to burn same thing, edit, fill, 50% gray. Okay. Now, here's what you need to do change the blend mode right here from normal to overlay. Nothing happens yet because burn hasn't been changed to overlay yet. So go up here change that to overlay now you can see this old booger alright so we're gonna start with burn and it doesn't make any difference which one you want to start with you can start with whichever uh, but right down here it defaults to this little paddle that would be the dodge tool but we're gonna go with the burn right now and once you click on that uh, these are the main tools right up here and make sure yours is turned on to midtones. Your exposure needs to be really low. Your uh, a tool here to burn with is going to be a traditional brush so your left and right bracket tools will control the size. Uh, please turn on protect tones. Um, if you click this right here and turn it on, it will be like an airbrush buildup. So if you keep uh, 
burning, you know, click, keep clicking it, it will build up like that spot on my head right there. So I'm going to do a control uh, alt Z a few times or just go to my history and back up a little bit there. Now, I'm going to turn that off because I don't want to build it up. All right. So I'm going to start with a, um, by first of all, make it bigger. So I'm control space bar left click or command on a Mac space bar click a couple of times. And what I do is look for areas that are dark because I'm going to burn uh, those dark areas or dark lines and make them a little darker. Again, this need, I'm going to take that to 10, and it's easier just to put a zero in right there. And I'm going to make this brush a little, little bit smaller. And let's go right here, and I'm going to just kind of run down there a little bit. Right down this, right here, right here, down the eyebrows, right down here. Here, here, and here, down here, there. Let's see, let me be right there a little bit. That may be all on the face. Uh, get this pocket here. Sometimes on a lighter area like this, You'll have to stroke it several times, or we can bring this up a bit, and you can see it is going to be stronger. Take it down these areas. And just go with the dark lines again. Over here, we've got a dark crease area here, here, come down here. In the clothes, it's a lot more fair game to um, run those dark lines. Let's go down this. That's good. All right, let's go with the dodge tool. Let's make the brush bigger. Maybe take that back down again. And let's run to the light side of things. Up on this collar, the light side. Light side here. Light side. Uh, up here on the top of that. Maybe up on that a little bit. Up here on the shoulder. Just building some contrast. All right, up here. So you got some white on the chin. So we bring that up a little bit. Might have gone a little too far. Whoa, we're on the wrong layer. I should have moved that to the dodge side, right? So let's back it up. Let's go to the history. And we need to be down on the shirt so we can see march this back here let's see where where that was not seeing any change let me zoom out okay that's still white white yeah Obviously, there's where the burn is. So now let's let's get back over here. Get this on the dodge, and now we're on dodge. Now let's on the right layer. Sorry about that. Put that on here. Put that up here.
Putting that up here. Get some on this. Didn't even think about that part. You can see the kind of a 3D effect going. You got this dark going down here, and they got the light on this side of it. Put some light on this side of the collar. You got the dark going underneath it. Get some light on this side of it. Maybe make the brush bigger and get some more light on this side of the collar. Get some light up there on that. If you go too far, yeah, you got it on its own layer over here. And you can see, hopefully, let's let's go up here and I'm gonna try to change the panel options here so you can see see what's going on now let's work on the face go around here a little bit a little bit on the chin Then let's see, uh, right here under the eye, make the brush a little bit smaller across the eyes, lighten them up a little bit, through here, right here is a little bit, the nose a little bit, down the bridge, right in here a little, under here. Be a little bit through there. Don't want to get too carried away. That's the key. You can undo it. That's another wonderful part of it. We're going to go right down here a little bit. Let's zoom out. Control minus. Now, let's look at what we've got. Command minus on a Mac, by the way. Let's turn both these eyeballs off. Just click and hold it down and drag. It will get both of these. Then let go with the left mouse. Click and hold them down. Turn it back on. Isn't that amazing what a difference it can make? Especially on the face. And again, you know, we can, let's, the dodge is highlighted, so let's just bring the slider down a little bit. Let's say right in there, let's go to the burn. Take the burn down just a little bit. And let's go back and, and turn these both off. Turn them both on. I think it's amazing what dodge and burn can do uh, on a portrait. You can do the same thing on a landscape uh, as well. There are a lot more to it, but you can certainly be very effective with it. So give this a try. Uh, I think you can uh, really do some artistic stuff. Now there's one last touch. We need to also, my teeth are very yellow, unfortunately, so Let's get up here and white those. And it's easy to go too far. Let's see what we've got here. And we've turned that down so it took a little bit more to, to get those up. I think that makes a world of difference overall. And hopefully you made me look better. I think I made me look better. All right. Uh, you guys work on the picture, and hopefully uh, things will turn out okay. And I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.